me here. So it being uh, 5.03, I was going to wait for Mary for a bit, but yeah, you get a, get a pad. Planning board waits for no person. I, I think the kind of thing we're talking about today, the minutes can just say we reviewed the, the draft with Peggy. Okay, sounds good to me. We can give her particulars later. Yeah. I'm going to give her the 503 start time. Maybe we should get, we have a, an unfamiliar name on the call that, and Rich can introduce himself. Sure, let's see. My name is uh, Rich Chevister. Let's see, I, I was uh, been in uh, resident of Waitley for like 30 years. Um, 20 years ago, my wife and I bought the Waitley General Store and um, converted it to the Waitley Health Center. And um, and let's see, my uh, back back in April, actually, I started the process. Um, the uh, tax committee sent me uh, applications to fill it out as if I'm a commercial property. You know, they wanted to assess it. They want to get as much assessment value as it is. And I sent them a letter pointing out that technically the property is not commercial. It operates under a special permit, um, which is, uh, you know, we went through the process, did it. Uh, but now in the last 10 years, I see that a number of the existing special permit properties have been converted to uh, commercial and seeing what's been converted i'd like to put in the request uh, to just long term so if i have other renters you know things change over time my wife now has retired from the medical um, i'd like to put in to have the property converted to commercial so i don't have to go have a special permit every time i want to have a new tenant uh, in in the location and and if I go to sell it, it's also you know one of those things that slows things down. I have no intention of selling it. We've had it for 20, 20 years. It'll probably be you know another ten years before I sell it. But I find that uh, the use uh, since other properties have been converted in town, that that is kind of why I've uh, I submitted an application, a bunch of the information to Don and in, in writing. I think he has. Uh, so when I have the right opportunity, that's kind of why, why I'm here. Okay, well, we will discuss that some more when we get to the other section. Thanks, Rich. So the first thing on the agenda is uh, reviewing the, uh, what are we calling it now? HUD plan bylaw. Yeah. So P Peggy has some updates, I believe. Yes. Um, so hopefully you all got the fourth draft dated 91621. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to go over a few things with you. Um, the changes uh, that town council recommended largely um, were incorporated, but there were just a couple of, of items um, that I added. So one was uh, a request from town council to actually put in uh, who the author was of the flood insurance study. Um, so I've done that on page one. Um, the second item is uh, the one that's uh, a little uh, tricky. Um, Brian Domina had requested that we change um, a D under designation of a community floodplain administrator to add town administrator or their designee. Um, and so uh, town council's comment was that um, they want to avoid potential disapproval from the attorney general's office. And so they want, would like um, or their designee to be removed. Um, Brian felt it was important to have that flexibility of who was going to be the uh, floodplain administrator since the idea was that the new community development administrator uh, could take on that role, but if for some reason that position wasn't funded or vacant, um, that would create a, a potential uh, gap or vacancy on um, who was administering that. So um, one possible option is to 
designate um, the community development administrator and then uh, add a sentence that would basically say that um, the town administrator would be the alternate if the position is vacant. That way it would be very specific um, and identified who was fulfilling that role and hopefully that would satisfy the AG's office. Uh, we can send it in like this and see what happens. Um, but if the AG's office also requests that or their designee be dropped, then the town administrator would be in the bylaws, the floodplain administrator. And I don't think that was the intention. So thoughts. I emailed Brian today. He was out of the office, so I couldn't talk to him. And sent him the draft and explained what town council had asked and asked if he wanted us to put in the community development administrator. And I didn't think to offer the option that Peggy just offered. And he's, his, react, his response was no use town administrator and then I'll delegate. delegate. period. <laughs> so I, I personally like Peggy's solution better. Yeah, me too. Is the intent of this, um, this is a question for you, Peggy, if the, if the concern with the phrase, well, maybe I'm getting it, what's the concern with the phrase or their designee? Is it basically that the attorney general's office would not want the town administrator to be able to delegate. I mean, basically what I just heard from Judy is, oh, let's put in town administrator and then the town administrator will just delegate. But if that's basically running afoul of the law, can you shed some light on that, please? Yeah, so the comment from town council was uh, to avoid possible disagreement approval by the attorney general's office, I recommend removing the or their designee phrase. The issue is the indefinite assignment delegation of enforcement authority. So I don't think they want um, it to be delegated. They want whoever is listed to be the responsible mm -hmm. party since that party has a regulatory role, if you will. So that's why I thought if we name specifically the community development administrator, which is I think what Brian's hope was to have this um, responsibility fulfilled by that new staff position, but then to have a very clear backup that in the, in the event that that position is vacant, then the town administrator would step in and that I could craft some language. So if, if you all like that approach, Judy, do you want me to just draft some language and then run it by Brian? Yeah, I think that personally, I think that would be great. And I suggest maybe vacant or unable to, to serve in this function or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, say they're on vacation for a month. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think that's good. It seems like the obvious place to do it is to add a add a new third sentence right here in part D. Right. Yeah, that was my intent to have a, a, an additional sentence. So you we would, and I just wanted to make sure it, 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 the new job title is community development administrator. Is that correct? It, correct. It's actually, I think for this purpose, that's correct. The official title is community development administrator dash Administ administrator assistant. Oh, I, I think community development administrator will be good enough. <laughs> 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 All right, so I will work on some language and then try and get that out in uh, the next day or two. Um, then on page four under subdivision proposals, um, uh, language, it was requested that language be um, inserted to clarify when the planning board uh, got involved in this uh, review. And so 
uh, Judy had sent me some language which I included, but then I also, I wanted to make it clear that it wasn't just site, uh, site plan review where the planning board's review kicked in, um, but that also if, if the development were subject to the subdivision regulations of the town of Waitley, that the planning board would be incorporating the standards into their subdivision plan review. So the point of section I is basically to have some additional standards, if you will, that are um, pulled into the review. So if you had a site plan uh, application in front of you, or if you had a subdivision in front of you, um, that you would be um, reviewing those to assure that um, such proposals minimize flood damage and to the maximum extent feasible, locate all structures, roads, utility, and other infrastructure out of the floodplain uh, to make sure public utilities and facilities are located um, so as to minimize flood damage and to make sure that adequate drainage is provided. And so those are the three, uh, if you will, additional uh, standards that the planning board should take into account. So is that okay as drafted or are there other suggestions? I just wanted to remind people that this was to, to restrict our oversight to the kind of project we normally review rather than in expanding it to include fences and drainage or grading and things that are to be under the ju other jurisdiction in this approval process. Yeah. Or also under the jurisdiction in this approval process, I guess. My only comments are really about um, plain language, and I would be inclined to suggest that instead of it just saying minimizing flood damage, I would say minimizing either the potential for flood damage or the likelihood of flood damage, or if we want to get it to as few words as possible, minimize flood damage potential in both subparts one and two. I might my language, um, my Mr. Language person reading of those is, um, it's just not really proper English to say that the proposals minimize flood damage. I mean, I understand the intent. I'm just suggesting an additional word to clarify. Right. The Yes, You're just basically think, saying insert potential. Yeah, or likelihood. That the, such proposals minimize flood damage potential, similarly in part two. We could, yeah. we could just get rid of proposals and say plans. Because we really are going to be dealing with plans rather than proposals. That's true. Certainly the word proposal in this context is probably best replaced by plans. Um, well, I mean, I can change it to, so this was the original state language, the subdivision proposal uh, oh, language. So we can change it. It would be subdivision, subdivision and site review site plan review plans. I think <laughs> there's redundant. some merit, excuse me, Peggy. I think there's sure. some merit in leaving proposal because in both cases, we often look at preliminary project descriptions that aren't necess don't necessarily include formal plans. And that's especially true with a subdivision one, I think. So proposal is, is a blanket thing, whereas plans are very, very detailed. It's a step in the process. I'm fine with proposals as well. I love with that then. Let's do potential then, flood damage potential in both one and two. Okay. Yeah. Will do. Anything else on that? Otherwise, I'm going to move along. Uh, the next change was uh, in definitions. Um, basically, 
town council said it was okay to um, have um, the, it with the word structure. Oh yeah, the structure part. Actually, before we get to that, uh, new construction was the first comment on page seven. Um, so uh, town council's comments was, I think the language should um, should uh, classify as new construction, those activities which start after the effective date of these provisions. And I think we should leave the words first in since there's already an existing floodplain bylaw. And so presumably the town would regulate subsequent improvements to structures that were, were already create, created under the existing bylaw, as well as any new proposals um, if this uh, bylaw is adopted by town meeting. And since it's a little vague, I recognize um, after the first date, after the effective date of the first Waitley floodplain overlay district bylaw, I was wondering if anyone knew what that first bylaw was, because <laughs> then maybe we could include it as the date, but if not, we can, I think we should probably leave it as is. So let me know what folks think about that. I can ask Lynn if she knows when it was voted. I can tell you it preceded Nicholas's term on the board because he didn't know it was there and I didn't. Um, Otherwise, I think we should leave the term first in. Do folks agree with that? Yeah. So let me just make sure I understand this because it seems like we're defining the term in a new bylaw. So creating a new bylaw, defining the term new construction, but new construction will something will be considered new construction if it commenced at potentially many years in the past. Is that where we're going with this? Which may no. be a sort of a confusing understanding of new construction. Most people think of new construction as something that happened on or after the, you know, this new bylaw is put into effect. Yeah, I think that the the tricky part is the phrase, including any subsequent improvements to such structures. So, um, my thinking, and we can certainly change this, my thinking was that if there were subsequent improvements to structures that were already existing under the current bylaw, that you would want to be able to regulate them and apply this updated floodplain bylaw mm -hmm. um, to mm -hmm. presumably have better protection for reducing flood damage. So that's that's the piece that I was focusing on was the subsequent improvements to such structures. Do, do we have more than two subdivisions in town, Judy? Do you know? Nishkowski, Skirkle, and... And uh, Pine Plains. Pine Plains. Those are the only two I know of, but I'm not sure why I understand how subdivisions play into this. It's, it wouldn't just be uh, structures and subdivisions, though, Don. It would yeah. be structures that were regulated under the old floodplain bylaw. So we'd have to go back and look at that. Yeah, okay. But that's why I left first in there. So. Yeah. So I'm, again, I'm playing this game in my head. Suppose we knew the date the, of the first Waitley floodplain overlay district bylaw. Let's suppose that date, just for purposes of argument, was January 1st of 1995. I'm just picking a, a random date. Now imagine rewriting new construction and, and replace the words the effective date of the first blah, 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 up to the comma with that specific date. So we'd just say new construction are structures for which the start of construction commenced on or after 1 January, 1995, period. 
And I'm just playing that idea in my head. I mean, imagine you could really write this bylaw. Like, honestly, if we knew that date, I would rather see this paragraph written to say, on or after that date, and then in parentheses, the date of, or the effective date of the first Waitley floodplain overlay district bylaw, close parenthesis. I think that would be clearer because now you're referring to a date that not any of us even know what that date is. So I'd rather see that date explicitly in the bylaw if possible. I think that's what she suggested. Okay, good. But then does that, am I the only one who thinks it would be jarring to read a new, in a new bylaw, a definition of new construction that refers to a date many years in the past? Well, we can, we can make it clear that the bylaw is only applying to substantial improvements. Okay. It's, not a, it's not retroactively. Those structures are there. They right. were created under the, the old bylaw. Okay. So it would just be, it, I, I can rewrite it. You know, once again, this is state language, but I can rewrite it. So it's very clear that the new bylaw is only applying to subsequent improvements to okay. such structures. Okay, so new construction, let me just see if I reflect this back to you, Peggy. So for the purpose of this bylaw, new construction, again, let's play this game where the, the original bylaw was 1 January of 1995. So we're saying new construction is, so is improvements made to any structures that were... Uh, built on or after 1 January, 1995? Um, new, new structures that are considered substantial improvements. Yeah. To, to yeah. Add that. So new construction or substantial improvements to existing structures. Yes. All right. So places where um, in the bylaw we refer to uh, things that happened before there were bylaws, we do give a date rather than anything right. to the original bylaw. Yeah. So that kind of speaks to me. I mean, I like the idea of, the, of a given date rather than uh, just referring to it if we can come up with it. Yeah. Okay, okay. so um, if Judy would be willing to see if she can find out that date and then I'll try and rework this language so it's clear. Yeah. Now, is the effective date the date it's voted or the date the AG signs off? Uh, the date it's voted by town meeting. Okay. So, so in our bylaws, bylaw 171-26 is the flood hazard overlay district regulation, right? I'm looking at yeah. the... 52 of the printed, my copy of the printed bylaws. Actually, it's on the very bottom of the page. Yeah, don't, because don't our bylaws mostly say when they were? No, just Lynn started that about five or six years ago because I see. To sort of try and resolve this question. Okay, <laughs> you're right. There's nothing. No indication in the printed bylaws about that particular that particular one. It will be a good training exercise for our new town clerk. <laughs> Find the date. Find the date. Okay. Okay, I will take a stab at that. Um, and then the final question I have for you is under R on page eight, definitions of flood zones. I didn't include the V-zone definitions because those are for flooding in coastal areas. Uh, town council noted that, you know, it was on the map, which you know, it's in the legend, but then if you look at the map, you don't have any coastal areas <laughs> subject to flooding. Um, sea level wise uh, would really need to uh, occur in a big way for that to happen. So I didn't include them, but I can certainly put them back in if you'd like. I don't think we'll miss them a bit. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and I think the uh, only other thing was the structure definition. He, the town council basically um, confirmed that we could have two structure definitions in there. And it just made sense for me, uh, to me to just leave uh, the structure definition as it was um, since it's applying to in this particular floodplain bylaw rather than trying to somehow combine them and then we haven't thought it through properly. Um, he wasn't bothered that there were two structure definitions. I think we discussed that before and I don't think we were bothered either. No. Okay. All right. So thank you. Um, I will make those changes and then um, Don, do you want me to go ahead and prepare a draft public hearing notice that you all can review? Yes, please. Okay. Um, you haven't heard from Margaret Christie, I take it. I have not. Margaret at the Ag Commission meeting was going to talk to both Peggy and Scott Jackson and try and see if they could develop some, well, first get a sense of answers to some questions like how deep is a disturbance <laughs> um, if you, in terms of moving, moving irrigation equipment and things like that. And, and then at what point is something a significant improvement and what point is it just a repair and that kind of thing. And her idea, they thought that if they could get some clarity on this as part of the education process, they might be able to develop some examples for the farming community and a kind of a checklist where, you know, these, these will be, you may have to apply for these, but they will be kind of routine pro forma approvals and these may need some, some more detailed review and these may need more explicit review. I, we didn't go much further, but yeah, but their ideas were very, I mean, they, they were instantly into how does this work if I, If I replace my pump and it's in the same place, is that a something I have to worry about kind of thing? So. Well, I think that sort of gets back to that um, substantial, you know. Yeah. Um, definition. So there's a substantial repair of a foundation. Um, well, there's also, that's, I'm sorry keep talking because yeah. I understand this the better, but. I don't know that we're gonna be able to, at least in the zoning bylaw, I don't think you'd wanna come up with, you know, specific, no. but, but as no, you No, they're say, not for, suggesting that. They're trying to get a feel for the implications yeah. of this. And I think um, it's, I suspect it's more a matter of Scott's interpretation than than getting at the bylaw, but. Yeah, I think it's one reason I. Scott's Thought interpretation, it would be helpful. yeah, what is substantial and what would impact flood storage. Yeah. It, it would be kind of hard to come up with kind of a generic list. I think you probably yeah. want to review what's being proposed and then hopefully maybe over time you'd have like, you know, a checklist yeah. of things that don't, you know, rise to the uh, review level, if you will. Well, I think we all realize that we have a lot of educating to do especially in the farming community and the more that this kind of thing has been thought through a little bit, the less we yeah. sound like total idiots, but. Well, I don't know if town council could help out in terms of. I don't know. I think, I think they're really, I think the place to start is with Scott and Scott, maybe yeah. you might, you might be able to give some sense of what you think the bylaw, how this equates with the bylaws, but I had hoped that she would have talked to, maybe she's talked to Scott, I haven't, so. Yeah, hopefully she's talked to Scott. <laughs> okay. And in terms of um, potential things that the new community development administrator could help out with is, um, you know, coming up with that checklist 
and hopefully helping out with um, what the application is going to look yeah. like. Good. Because um, I saw on your agenda you had a item for assignments. Yes. I haven't met her yet, but. And who is the new? Her name is Hannah Davis. I gather she's a recent Smith graduate. She lives in Waitley. She has some planning background. I don't know what it is. And she's been working as an uh, assistant with the Greenfield Conservation Commission part-time. Great. And she comes on board full-time at the end of October, but she'll be available on, I love Brian's phraseology, on a limited basis <laughs> in the meantime. In other words, I want her time too. <laughs> All right. So anything else for me? Otherwise, I think I have my, my marching order, so to speak. Just thanks. We appreciate it. No, I'm happy to help out. And it's always great to work with the Waitley Planning Board. Your work will help advance other towns that have to go through this process. <laughs> have you heard about your fellows nomination? No, I haven't. When, I think it's when, like, a, it's, it's many months, Judy. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> Peggy's been nominated to be a fellow of the Society of Plan, uh, American Society of Planners, is that it? It's the um, American Institute of Certified Planners. Oh, wow. and this is a big honor. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> well deserved. I'm, I'm fine if I don't get the, uh, the nod, but it's nice to be nominated and recognized by the, the mass chapter. So, Well, definitely prepare your acceptance speech because it's terrible <laughs> when they go up and get the thing and they haven't thought about their acceptance. <laughs> yes, I will do that. <laughs> I, I, I imagine it will probably, if, if there is a, even a ceremony, it'll probably be via Zoom, given the, uh, the state of our country. <laughs> uh, our, the Brownfields Conference is in Oklahoma, and um, <laughs> the staff person that I work with at the Council of Governance and I are like, oh, Oklahoma. Oh, not sure we would get a plane to go to Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. So, but... Anyhow, great to see you all. And uh, thank you. hopefully thank I can thank you. Uh, bang this out in a couple of days and get this off to you. Thank you, Peggy. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Night. Night. So additional uh, potential duties. Well, why don't we keep Rick from having to wait? Okay. And Move to other than. Having heard Sarah's travails with other planning boards where she had to sit and sit and sit. <laughs> it's Deerfield. Let's not even start those politics. Was that on your uh, land over there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so we have discussed this a bit, Rich, and we're kind of up in the air. Uh, no, don't have a um, a consensus either way on on making that um, commercial property. Um, my feeling is that my personal feeling is that having watched um, Route Nine in in Hadley over six, the last sixty five years, uh, it would be good to be ready for it rather than do it piecemeal. Like, I mean, be ready for a commercial area in town because I don't know if you've followed route nine, but it, it was all farm stands and farms 60 years ago. And, uh, in the past five years, uh, about half of it has turned into commercial and I would like to be prepared for that. But, um, I, be happy for anybody else to chime in. Well, first, I would like to point out that Hadley did that very deliberately, and they have a procedure called transfer of development rights, where in order to build there, especially large things there, 
you pay into a special fund that preserves land elsewhere. So it was, it's, a, it's not a stated formal policy, but it's an effective formal policy. And I think it's worked pretty well. They've managed to, to save a lot of land. Um, so I wouldn't call it exactly unexpected. I agree with your comment though, that if we're going to do more commercial zoning, especially of plots on their own. I mean, the ones that we have changed have been adjacent to existing commercial areas and your plot, Rick, doesn't fall in that category and it's really surrounded by houses. So, so I think that it, in order to do it, I for one would like to see a whole review of, of zoning and where a new commercial should be and if new commercial should be. Well, can you tell me a little bit the history of how the, was it the old the lobster pot restaurant property and Zan Zamboni's, how that came about? Cause that seems like- That preceded, kind of that preceded zoning. That goes way, I think the, the zoning in Waitley came in first in 1972 or 1950. That, that spot was a restaurant way, way back. Oh yeah, yeah, no, and, and that's probably similar to what I think there was a gas station back in Zanoni's, the- Zanoni's, Zanoni's has been there a long time, so. Yeah, similar time so, frame to White Leanne, I think it's, it's those, those got yeah, converted so, though in about nine, 10 years ago or so, those have been converted recently. Yeah, those were, and I think the idea then there was very, and I'm the only one, I think, I think maybe Don was on the board then. I, I was. Um, those had been commercial for so long. And in both cases, there's kind of a minimal amount of immediate housing around and they, they face each other. So it was kind of a recognition of what was already there. Mm -hmm. um, I think we also took into consideration the uh, because the town owned that it made uh, potential use for it uh, more amenable to. So is that the restaurant property or how, what property were you? The restaurant property belongs to us. Okay, yeah, that was turned back to the town. Or taken over. <laughs> yeah, okay, lack of, yeah, paying taxes or um, so. So I think that at some point, when things settle down, we're probably going to need to take a, a good hard look and look at the last. Um, do you think we're due for another, uh, not zoning, but planning on zoning, Judy? We did the community development or whatever it was about 15 years ago. I, long, if I had to, I think plan, that was it. On my big project immediate list, need list is a review of the subdivision bylaws to, to reflect more smart growth because they're, they're very obsolete. So if I had to pick a big project that we would devote a lot of time and energy to, it would be that one. But, um, you know, there's certainly, there's, I understand that the town has applied for a grant to look at development of more commercial properties in, in town. I'm not quite sure. I haven't seen it. I don't know who initiated it. Um, I don't know if they've gotten it, but if that grant comes through, then, then this will presumably move to the forefront. Rich, it may behoove you to go to a uh, um, select board meeting and ask the question there. So what is the technical process? So once you put in like a request, then it's the town selectmen that have to approve it or what's the formal process that has happened before to uh, for the town meeting or? Before it can go to town meeting, the planning board has to approve or disapprove. It can go forward, I think either way. Mm -hmm. So we would have to formally vote whether he takes it to the select board or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, in, and I could. I don't think right now you'd have a positive vote. Okay, but if I can document it, how it compares to the other properties that you've com converted. Yeah. 
um, you know, it's use that it was in use before those properties came into use. Um, yeah, the issue the issue is what we call spot zoning, mm -hmm. and compartmentalization. I think the answer here probably lies in that grant and how that was phrased and who submitted it. And, that, and that's why I suggested he go go talk to the the board. Well, I don't think the board. I think Brian Domina oh, probably. Okay. Gotcha. So we're saying so it's Brian. He's the town administrator. administrator. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've talked to him. It's Domina, D O M I N A. Yeah, you no, know, I think I talked to him a year or two ago. About some of I'm sorry, we can't give you a, a concrete answer. Mm -hmm. That's where our feelings are, and that's where we're heading at this point. Okay. Um, so with the the thinking, how is it? that the tax people automatically make it commercial, whatever in the thing. Is there a relationship that it, uh, I was amazed that they, they, the town tax people treat it as a commercial property. Uh, and, and that's my biggest thing is I'm, I'm paying commercial taxes, but I don't get to take advantage of it being a commercial property. It's, you know, it's a special permit. It's not commercial property. Um, I can't answer that. I don't know if anybody else can. It doesn't seem right to me, but. I think maybe there are two. I, I Have you talked to, since you must have talked to the assessor's office. About Not a that. number of years and stuff, but, but essentially yeah. they sent me all the same form. They sent all the commercial companies and asked me to fill it out and raid me the fifth if I didn't do it. They were. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I could talk to her, I guess. And I so is the yeah. idea that a, a commercial use in a residential zone is taxed at a commercial rate? Well, it's more just that they, they wanted to increase the value. The, the value that the town has already put on it is, I think, uh, well over 100,000 higher than I couldn't even get anybody to bid within 100 or 150,000 of what the assessed value is when I tried to sell it. So that triggered some things and say, hey, how come at such a high rate? Then I got this form in April asking, hey, they would like to assess commercial value on its use and what its income it's bringing. And if you if you did that for what what it's bringing in, you know, my tax rate should be half of what I'm currently paying. And that's where I have this dilemma. Hey, you want it to be pay all this high taxes, but in reality, you know, it's not having the income. So it's to me, it's unfair. Yeah. Did you try for an abatement? Um, yeah, it's not yet. I could. I I did that um, when they first came in ten years ago. I did put in because they essentially, you know, tried to count every square foot. So I went and argued with them. I think ten years ago, with some success. But it's it's one of those uh, things that it's never. Mm -hmm. it's, the abatement stuff is always a tough. Yeah, tough call. I think the issue here is, it's funny if it's rezoned as commercial, then instantly the value goes up, even even if there's still an agricultural use on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like they've. So there seems to be one issue that that the potential value has gone up, or mm -hmm. theoretically the value has gone up just. Yeah just because the land can be sold for more, mm -hmm. but, and then what you just said is they seem to be wanting to tax on the basis of the revenue. Um, I don't know that your revenue is any different than if you were collecting regular rent, is it? I mean, residential rent? Um, potentially, if I, I've had to say turnaround tenants because it's not always, fully occupied, you know, how many yeah. people want to go through a special permit to rent a property for commercial use? Yeah. So at some point, you know, might say, hey, mm. if, if, if I can get a formal, hey, you guys won't do it, then I can go to them and say, hey, they won't do it. I want my taxes cut in half. You know, it's yeah. like, I don't, I don't mind paying high taxes, but I don't, mm. the town is getting the, the money with not having the corresponding yeah. behind so, it so so you'd be happier if we took a negative vote 
today rather than. Well, I, I want to say I went through the process. I tried. And, yeah. and if at some point, you know, honestly, I'd like to, to make a commercial because that would make my life easier because maybe yeah. I could get more rental and make it pay for itself. Um, mm. But well, my alternative gave you a, is a, a letter back to the town. Saying, we gave you a letter saying that we're not prepared to make it commercial at this point and don't see doing it for the near future. Would that help? Um, I guess we hit the limits, yeah, because yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess the, the reasons of the, the thing, I think my issue is, yeah, that it, it was, you know, I guess there's two tracks that if it's, I'd almost rather go through the process and have it formally um, voted down or, or something as that I tried, because that's, okay. Because, because I guess I'd, I'd like to to do it right. I'd like to argue, hey, the town did this, the town didn't do this, and mm -hmm. then you know technically, I have the right to go sue or something if I wanted the option to. You know, technically, I want to have my mm -hmm. ducks in a row for whatever happens. I don't want to do it half ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and if it doesn't, you know, I'll, I'll live with fair. whatever happens. It's just that. That's fair. Um, for, for most zoning things, the select board likes that to be heard at annual town meeting. Yeah. And, and I'm a no her. I think I said, Hey, if I get it done in the next two years, I'd be okay. happy. I, I'm not worried about, you know, time at this point. So yeah, I can let you guys talk about it more. Just this, I just wanted yeah. to start to have the conversation to yeah. understand where you're coming from and maybe talk to the select board and the planning person a little more because mm -hmm. it's been a while since it's happened. Okay. There's a real disconnect between assessors, us land maps, and that's, what's really interesting here. This yeah. disconnect. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And that's why I'm a little shocked. Yeah. That that's what triggered this whole thing was, yeah. was that. Well, the thought process is just totally different. I mean, it's, yeah. it's they're, yeah. they're regulating different things sort of. But yeah. yes, they're you're getting you can't take the you're paying, but you can't take the advantage of why you're paying. Yeah. 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 So it's um, that it just doesn't seem fair to me. So it's like right. hey. things need to be lined up and the definitions need right. to be the same. Right. Yeah, I guess I'd like to yeah eventually resolve it. So, hey, if I want to sell it in 20 years or something that my don't have to go through all the other things that I had to go through that were a pain in the butt. And, and then it's, uh, you know, it's, I think so. But yeah, I think for tonight's, today's discussion is good, whatever. Let me explore some more options. I appreciate your the board's time and, and talking about it, helping me understand a little bit more. And then in the, the future, maybe I'll request some more time or, or some more stuff once I research a little bit. A little yeah, bit and more. talk to Brian about that grant because I, I, remain puzzled that they applied for it and the planning board didn't know anything about it. Yeah, okay. and, and that was relevant. You need to, to tell him that. And that was in to, into what happened in the past, you're saying? The grant was... Well, I know that, I mean, it's an active application. It's out now. I, I, oh, I but, see. Okay. Hmm. Okay, something now that, okay, to see if it... Yeah, I just, I just, anyway, it may have some bearing on what you're doing because one of the applicants we had for a the site plan review referenced it as wanting needing more commercial activity Wait, okay. and hmm. and I gather somebody nicely wrote a grant and didn't make us do it so that's good but um, anyway grant application okay now let me explore that trying to understand that aspect that, that's the biggest thing just trying to understand what the history yeah. what's going yeah, on yeah I just don't know what's involved there mm -hmm. But it may, depending on what's going on with that grant, give us a more specific timeline on when this is going to happen. Okay. Or put it down. I mean, this may end up with this grant more nudged to the top of our yeah. okay. project list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I appreciate your time. I'll we'll move on to your other business. I appreciate you squeezing me in. <laughs> That's what I have to sit hey. back. I can go have dinner. Thank you, Rich. Okay. Thank, thank you. you much. Okay. Bye bye. Right. I don't know about anybody else, but I didn't get any minutes for uh, 
We do. Mm-hmm. And if she knows we're meeting, <laughs> she must. That's a good point. And nobody's gotten emails. Hope she's okay. Yeah, I've seen no minutes. Hmm. 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 Yeah. No, I didn't. didn't I mean, that the email went out to everybody. Yeah, it sure did. Oh, we're down to planning assignments. Yep. I have got her working on the resource replacement fee for the for the solar bylaw. Um, I don't know how much work there is to be done, but um, research on that. It's, it's a good project because she'll she'll learn about APRs and conservation restrictions and get mm-hmm. to work. I think with a little bit with some of the people on the Conservation Commission, the Ag Commission. And uh, the one thing that I think she could do is look into these transfer of development rights and see what kind of money is changing hands and that might have some bearing on, on the size of the fee because these are, you effectively pay the, the, the concept is a little different because rather than it's aimed at if you build in one area, you save, save land in another area so that they're, you're, you're trying to direct, direct development, but it's, it's, basically a, it's basically a fee to get the privilege of building in that select area. So it would have, I think, some bearing on on what what kind of fees are essential for this or what people thought was worth doing. And I I have the data on from the CPC about all of the APRs we've done and and the the community preservation coalition or the state project data site has has a lot of conservation restriction information. So so that's all I know there. So one thing that I've been thinking about was triggered by a recent newsletter sent around within Pine Plains by our board of managers, uh, where to my, somewhat to my surprise, the newsletter said how the board of managers was preparing the annual stormwater management plan to be, or, or, or status update, I forget their wording, but basically a report on how the subdivision stormwater management systems are working or being maintained. And now the board of managers is preparing to submit that to the town for review. And I was thinking, oh, how about that? Who on the town is going to get that? And who's expecting it? And what other kinds of, like I know with, uh, you know, we've, we've created certain approval conditions for special permits or site plan reviews that set conditions on future reports. Like even I think with this, um, this storage thing we just approved on 510. And I was thinking along the lines of, would this new person be able to kind of look through our records and figure out like what sorts of reports should we be getting from solar facilities and subdivisions and And what should we be monitoring what should we be monitoring exactly judy because i think we're doing things and not keeping track of all those things yeah the solar facilities are at least the ones that were approved under the bylaw are supposed to be submitting annual reports too and i don't think any of them have ever been Right. Submitted, or at least I. They could have been. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, and the marijuana special permits expire after five years. And I don't. And that somebody should be on top of that to make sure that they're renewed. 
that kind of thing. Yeah. I think the Cannabis condition, uh, Commission follows that. Well, the town should because it's our special permit that expires, yeah. not theirs. It's not their license, it's our permit. And all special permits expire on a particular day, am I correct? If they're not, if they're not activated, I mean, if they're, if you get a permit for something, it's only, and you don't do the construction. I see. Otherwise, it, unless it says differently, it, it goes with the applicant, with the owner, not with the land. I see. Okay. Okay. But it's one of the conditions on uh, Pine Plains is that they yearly do a cleanup of the drainage system and right. give us a report. And they, when, when John still was involved, um, that was happening. And when he handed over the, the reins uh, last year sometime or early, early yeah. this year, I don't remember exactly. I think it was early this year. Um, I chatted with a number of people uh, about that and we just had a, a quick meeting so that uh, everybody knew where, where it needed to go. And so when this report, like I guess since I live here, I, I may find out when this report is submitted, are they going to be sending it to you, Don, as the chair of the planning board? Yeah, they, they're supposed to. And then you're going to curl up by the fire and read it? No, I'm going to file it. I mean, you know, I I ride through there every once in a while just because it's kind of part of my baby. But uh, just it's uh, it's nice to see a good, a well-run subdivision. Yeah, so far. So, but but again, not to press the point here, but. Do we not, should we be reading these reports or just filing them? Well, I do look it over. Okay. And, um, should everyone on the board look it over? But when I think, I think when you get it done, you might just mention that you've gotten it under other. Yeah. I mean, ideally I would, you know, you'd circulate it to the entire board. At least I could put it on one drive and, you know, again, so these things don't get lost. All right, well, I'll see if I can find previous reports and uh, move them onto the OneDrive. That'd be great. Of course, obviously, I have a personal interest in this particular subdivision, <laughs> but the general point is well made that there are these things we've done that set up future reporting requirements and we are not tracking them or following up if the reports don't come in. Well, we followed it for the first 10 years, I would say, wouldn't you, Judy? It started about 10 years ago. We followed them as long as, well, what it, initially they, they had to have an annual inspection by the highway department or the, right. and we waived that finally because that was obviously not necessary. Well, Keith, at Keith's strong suggestion. <laughs> and uh, so, I think that's when it, and after that, John submitted one in writing, one to everybody, I think when he was, of course he was still coming to see us for occasional issues now and then, so that he had some mm -hmm. other incentives to do that. I'll look through my planning board folder on my computer. Yeah, it should be part of the planning, uh, part of the Pine Plains files with the in town offices actually. All right. Well, I think that's enough. Unless I don't mean to cut anybody off, but I've babbled enough. I just have one follow-up question with their questions about the OneDrive. Oh, is that resolved? How the town administrator feels about it? Um. Oh, that was the thing that um, Amy. Yeah. Amy brought up. And I know Tom did suggest that I check in with the ethics board about this. Um, you know, we're not, 
we're not, um, my, I haven't done that. So let's be clear. I haven't checked in with them. My thing is we don't use it for interboard, non-recorded, non-meeting communication. Right. It's strictly a storage thing. So is there issues with it with that? It's an accessibility. I think um, the issues were, were with, yeah, um, using yeah, it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there are ethics problems. We don't. Yeah. We don't use it as a as a decision making mechanism. It's yeah. purely it's purely informational. Yeah, and we review all the everything that's there is reviewed at meetings or had has been yeah. or both. My interpretation of Amy's response was that there are official procedures whereby certain communications happen, like the agendas. Agendas have to be sent by email, and the idea that agendas could be dropped in a shared folder and then accessed is not following policy. So um, she kind of said she didn't need or want access to the OneDrive because we have to communicate with her in, in set ways. I think though that Hannah should be on OneDrive. I would think so. And she's community development at Waitley.org, I think. Should my under my impression, Judy, from what you said about her status is that it's too soon for me to try to reach out to her about setting her up on OneDrive? No, I would do it now. She has she has a laptop and an email. She's working part time. So you said community development, all one word. Yeah. At Waitley. Yeah. That's a long email address. That's a lot of characters. You guys can just well, he left off the administrator. <laughs> <laughs> I wait, we don't know. Couldn't just call it CD or com dev. No, had to be. Well, after a while, those things nobody remembers what they stood for. <laughs> That's true. That's true. okay. I will take the action to reach out to. Oh, and I'm sorry, Hannah. What was the last name? Davis. Davis. Okay. A recent Smith graduate, like a young person. Wow, we let those into Waitley? <laughs> she may be living at home, I don't know. Lives on Long Plain somewhere, I think. Okay, so I'll take that action. Um, right. Maybe one before we, I know we're all itching to go have dinner, but, um, and since Don and I were at the Franklin Regional Planning Board meeting, um, I mean, I actually thought that was a really interesting meeting. I would like to thank you, Don, for sucking me into that. And, but there was this discussion about brown fields and the support that the FRCOG can help with that. And I was, you know, I was thinking about all kinds of things in town where this could come up from the blue school to the historical, you know, by the milk bottle. And you know, there were things, so I don't know if. Uh, Peggy sent around some materials. I saw the email today. Is there anything worth sharing with Judy and Sarah and Tom about this or just resharing that? Or what was your takeaway, Don, from that meeting that the other members might be interested in knowing? Well, it's stuff that I've become personally interested in it because we talk about it over and over. But um, I, we could, I could certainly do a um, you know, a quick write-up. Might be nice. Like, I like my mind was blown about the culverts discussion. Now you can imagine, like, why would that be interesting? But the idea that, you know, all over the place, like average 10 culverts per mile of road, and these culverts may be clogged or, you know, failing and there's I can all tell this you work. live in a new subdivision. <laughs> if you lived on your street, you would live this. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. This is I'm still a newbie here, but I was thinking like, so does anyone has has Waitley gone through one of these culverts assessments? Does anyone like yeah, the highway department know this or yeah, yeah. Uh, Keith is well aware of it. Okay. This was Waitley just did a um resiliency evaluation. Did you? was part of that, I think. 
Okay. Looking at, at climate change and risks. Right. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can find the report. I, I don't know. I, I saw the draft report, but uh, I'm at a committee. See, you're going to wind up being in, on as many committees as the rest of us pretty soon. <laughs> well, you know, um, so anyway, I mean, I thought the culvert thing was interesting. The whole thing about the um, uh, ADA and the, like, again, our, is our town an exposure of ADA-related lawsuits? Well, we're in, we're in good shape because we just did that so we can get a library grant. So we have a current one that's only about a year old. Okay. And uh, we passed with flying color, colors. And I figure if you're happy here, Don, then we must be set. But that was finally getting done for a library. All the issues were at the elementary school, I think, other than the library. <laughs> but yeah. wow. um, uh, maybe Brant should be our representative to the monthly FERCOG meetings. The monthly FERCOG meetings. Oh, you're really trying to how about like um, uh, I don't Sarah know. Doesn't monthly, know this. I'm leaving my job at the at the university at the end of the year for for something new TBD. So I, I might have more time for more things if my wife, I can't tell my wife. What? I didn't hear anything about that. <laughs> um, Possible deniability. Well, the, the arrangement, are these these meetings, are they monthly, Don? Every two months. Every two months. Yeah. And the arrangement now is Don is our official member. Nope. I'm, I'm, I'm an at-large member now. Okay, but you get the agenda and then you tell us if there's something you think that we should be talking about, right? Right. Yeah. So maybe that ought to be Brant. Well, he's well, a regular member now. I'm a, a um, I forget what they call it, but, oh, at large. Yeah. But I'm also on the executive committee. Yeah. Okay, well then. So do we get two votes, Don? Does Waitley get two votes at that yeah. thing? Yeah. Wow, because Waitley doesn't have two votes in anything. Except we don't vote on anything. Yeah, that's what I figured. Information. So, well, why well, don't you get just get Brand added to the email distribution list for that? No, I am. Me, oh, okay. Oh, well, wait a second. I'm officially in the FRPB. Right. Not the regional planning board. Right. But you said something about the FERCOG monthly meetings, which I think is a different thing. Well, FERCOG's planning meetings, is that the same thing, Don? Well, FERCOG runs it, but... It's not every month. No, it's every two months. Okay, yeah. it's probably the same thing. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, they're going to say, Judy, baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just... All right, well, this 610. Okay. I would uh, move that we adjourn. So, do we need to save this transcript before we go since this I'm is moving? I'm going to do, I'll do it right now. Okay. I'll transfer. And then actually, it'll. I think if you save it, it'll save it to a folder on your local computer. And then you want to copy it into the OneDrive folder for the meeting. Well, when I, all right, so hold on. Like, I just clicked it. It said there's a show in folder. I mean, actually, I can almost do this because. Um, Even on my iPad, it says who can see this transcript. You know, I think I just did it done okay. in the OneDrive folder mm -hmm. is now a text file called Meeting saved, closed caption dot text. All right. Look at that, word for word with some errors. Like uh, somebody said, apparently, otherwise you're going to see God, baby steps, baby. <laughs> I like how AG kept gamming up his 80s. So. Mary may need to still watch this to get the context on that. We close caption things on television for Bill's hearing, and you should see what they do with baseball terms. It's really funny. All right.
So the next motion. next meeting. Uh, do we need? Do we have a second? I think we have it. I'll second it. We don't have to vote to adjourn, right? Yeah, you do. No, but we do. We need to set the next meeting. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, the regular Tuesday, I would say. So that would be October twenty sixth, Tuesday. Okay. I'll, for do at this point we don't have an agenda for that. We meeting. won't have an agenda till just before. Okay. So five p.m. in remote. Yep. Okay. So I created a new OneDrive folder for October twenty sixth. All right. Well, the meeting is adjourned. Now it's official.